Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my video series here on the ultimate pool. Uh, this is a follow on from my first uh, video about just how amazing this swim spa pool really is. If you haven't already seen the video, please do uh, check out the link at the top of the screen here and come back and watch this video also. Now the purpose of this video is to take you guys through the entire build process of, of installing this pool and what it took to actually complete this entire project right from the beginning and the planning through to this final stage you can see here. Um, now the purpose is really so that um, those of you that are already maybe in the uh, process of doing a project like this, this will give you some ideas and things to think about in terms of how you proceed with your project uh, but also even for those of you that haven't uh, maybe installed a pool in your home yet at least this will give you an idea of what's involved if you decide to go with a, an above ground type uh, swim spa like this pool here so uh, please do click and subscribe so you can come back and find us also and check out the rest of this video series but uh, let's just get right into it Okay, well, what actually inspired us to end up with a, a pool like this in the backyard? Well, probably three to four years ago, um, we had the typical backyard here that you'll see in the photos. Uh, we had some, you know, trampoline playthings for the children, etc., etc. But it was all just an open grass area here. But uh, I had a particularly warm summer here where I was out working outside quite often and I just decided we really need a pool out the back here to cool down in. So we did actually go ahead and put in a above ground like a like a PVC type pool which is only a two or three thousand dollar pool a very cheap investment and we actually got a lot of enjoyment out of that for a couple of seasons um, but we did find that after a period of time the um, when it got to more, more towards winter um, the kids and well all of us for that matter didn't really want to use the pool that much so then we did end up uh, almost by chance looking at uh, a swim spa similar to this one here at which point we embarked on the journey of uh, researching what pool would really suit us and then made the decision to um, purchase this pool here. So obviously uh, before we could even start to put this pool in here we had to do a lot of measuring um, and of course we had to remove the old uh, cheap above ground pool as well and all the water that went with it. Um, but once we'd done that we did uh, identify that we would actually have to do somewhat of an excavation in here because a pool like this here does need to be on a very solid concrete slab. So we did even use lasers in here, we had little laser units to measure uh, the height of where the, the pool might potentially sit at its maximum height relative to our existing decking that comes out from the house here and also in relation to all of our fencing areas around the side of the pool here. So very useful to use a laser and really get your spend a lot of time doing your measurements first so that you can identify exactly just vertically of course at what height you're going to have your pool but also in relation to all your boundaries and that may be quite important in regards to some of your local government regulations on pool safety. Okay, so once uh, we'd done our calculations here, um, I did work out that we needed to go almost two feet down here from what was the original grass level at the ground. Um, I did think about uh, digging it all by hand with a spade, but I did fortunately realize that was going to take me probably two years working every day to do that. So we did get a mini digger in here in the end, and we did ex ex excavate around this whole area, and it's almost... Yeah, it's about uh, two feet deep here below what this decking level is here. Now the reason we had to go down that far is because the concrete slab that this pool sits on actually needs to be about six inches thick as you'll see in some of the following pictures. It really needs to be very thick solid and it needs to be reinforced with steel as well because you have really about 12 tons of water on this so it's a lot of weight. Um, so we did have to go down to that level so that we could fill in with the gravel and then put the concrete slab in and what we actually wanted to end up with here was that the surface the po this pool would actually sit on was actually going to be one foot below 
the height of this deck surface you can see here. And the purpose in this case was that we wanted the height of this pool to be down as low as possible while still meeting the fencing regulations in our location here, which actually requires uh, that the pool side has to be a minimum of 1.2 meters high off the ground for obviously pool safety and for children. Once we'd completed our uh, excavation in this whole area, um, we did uh, then obviously have to prepare for the concrete slab pour. Uh, and that involved building a timber frame, as you'll see in the photos, um, and then obviously the plastic polythene base to go underneath the concrete, uh, and the steel reinforcing that then would go inside the concrete during the pour. I must emphasize that you must have steel reinforcing for a slab of this nature with a pool with this much weight. It's a tremendous amount of weight. So once we'd got that in place, we were ready for the concrete pour. Um, now the timber surrounds, we actually decided that we would keep those in place bolted to the side of these uh, concrete slab uh, after finishing the slab rather than removing them because those would be useful timber frame sides to actually allow us to build this timber uh, decking surround afterwards also. Now a little tip when you're doing the uh, concrete slab pour, if you can possibly identify where your power cables are going to be required going up into the pool area, you can put some PVC piping into that uh, area where you're going to do the concrete pour as we've done here in the photos you can see so that uh, when we pour that concrete we then have a PVC ducting already built into the concrete which feeds from the power from the home up and into the concrete slab where the pool is. Now when you install a uh, swim spar of this type with uh, even with a heat pump you're going to have potentially quite high power requirements from your main switchboard in the home. So in this particular case we did need to put a whole set of new very large cables right from our switchboard across the other side of the house out into this pool area here and then obviously in the ducting from here through to the pool heating unit and into the pool area. Now um, if you can, well I, I actually did all, most of this work myself, so if you can get all that ducting through in your ceilings of your house or whatever route you need to take and get those cables out to here for your electrician, obviously you can save some of the cost of the project by doing it yourself. Okay, so once we'd had our uh, timber frames put in place for the uh, concrete slab pour, we had our concrete truck ordered, uh, and when the concrete truck arrived, we also needed to pump that concrete about 40 meters from the front of the property up into the slab, so we did have to hire a concrete pumping truck also. And now with the help of um, my lovely wife, who was, uh, I guess, one of the other contractors, um, and our two guys on the truck, we were able to spread that concrete into the slab here and fill it up and screed it off flat across the surface. Now it was quite a challenge to actually do that surfacing and getting it flat. Um, I was going to do it entirely on my own, uh, but it turned out to be a bit of a challenge and the guy, one of the guys from the truck was actually extremely helpful in helping us to just get that final flush surface on that surface of the slab. So I would recommend if you're doing a job like this, maybe make sure you've got someone who knows how to do it right the first time so you don't end up with a concrete disaster. So after we completed the concrete pour, we actually needed to wait around six to eight weeks anyway for that concrete to really cure properly before we were going to put uh, the weight of the pool on that slab. Um, the pool was still on order at that stage anyway and hadn't yet arrived. So during that time frame, what we did was we built a timber frame around about this distance out here from the edge of the pool all the way around a timber frame to frame in the surrounding earth in this area because remembering of course we have under this decking here around about 12 to 15 inches of height from this deck surface to the ground surface below here and where that slab is that the pool is actually landed on. Now 
one of the reasons around that also of having this large area right around this decking here quite recessed into the ground is because we actually need to make sure we can have full access to all the side panels of this pool for any kind of maintenance or repairs that are required. So although it won't be obvious looking at this decking here right now, we've actually built sections of this decking all the way around that lift straight up and out of the way and you'll see that shortly in a video. So we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six sections around this entire pool that we can lift straight out of the stacking and then we can get inside of this pool right down to ground level anytime we need to do any maintenance or repairs. Okay, just a quick video to confirm the details of our uh, lap spa delivery location here. As you can see behind the uh, palms here you've got the concrete pad all re ready and prepared for the uh, pool landing. Uh, just going down towards the right here, uh, already been pre-arranged with the crane operators. The, the crane will be parked where the, uh, the black uh, Toyota is parked right here. Uh, and just going on further behind the garage, down where the palms on the other side is where the pool will be uh, brought up with the uh, delivery truck to be lifted. So about another two months into the project here, we've had the concrete slab uh, hardened properly um, and we've built our outer frame which is underneath the decking and we were ready for the pool delivery and we get the call, the pool is ready for delivery and so in comes the crane. In this case we needed about, I think it was an 8 or 10 wheeler truck, uh, about an 18 ton truck to do the lift from way down there on our driveway area up into this back area here. The pool itself was around about a, a two ton weight empty uh, but because we were lifting a relatively long distance horizontally here of around about 25 meters we obviously did need a relatively big crane. Uh, the crane as it turned out only just fit into our driveway right close to the uh, concrete wall and we did fortunately get some, pers uh, some uh, permission from our fantastic neighbors to allow the crane to swing the pool over the neighbor's house around to our final resting location here where it is now. So with our pool delivered and in place here, we pretty much started using this pool from day one. Uh, but of course we did have all this groundworks and landscaping to finish. So what we did do initially is put in a this AstroTurf artificial grass area, which gave us a, quite a level area onto the um, uh, decking area here also, which makes quite a nice play area here and it actually looks looks really good as well. Um, we did then build all of the timber framing in here, um, which we have done in a treated timber and I've also coated that timber in an additional treatment uh, when cutting and fitting oil just to give it that extra bit of longevity and we also used stainless steel fittings for all of the attachments underneath this decking uh, framing here. Uh, I did take quite a bit of time here in sizing and positioning all of our framing sections so that we had removable frame sections underneath here so that we can lift sections of this decking to access the pool and I'll show you that very shortly as well and that's worked out really really well. Okay with our deck framing underneath the um, deck panels here we've made sure that the framing is in line with the edge of these um, individual deck panels so that we can take out sections of the decking here including the frame 
beneath so that we can have easy access to maintain the pool. So we're going to do that right now with my trusty assistant and a couple of makeshift tools here. We're going to lift it straight out and show you how easy it is. We've removed one row of screws here and now we do a simple lift and across. And there we have it, instant access to the side of the pool. So of course once we've finished our maintenance, put our panels back on this uh, section here, we can just slot straight back in really easy straight in with our tool here again with my trusty assistant here and we can lift the the whole unit on and it slides straight in like that and voila you'd never know there was a removable panel So there you go guys, that was our journey in uh, creating this amazing project here and putting this spectacular pool in our backyard here. Um, again, I can't emphasize enough how amazing these pools are. If you haven't seen my first video, um, please check it out, the link on the top of the screen here or at the end of this video. Um, do consider subscribing to my channel also and you can come back and watch my additional videos that I'll be uh, loading related to uh, pool repair and maintenance. There's quite a few things I'm going to put on here. Um, and But again, I just hope that you guys find some of this information useful. Please do send me um, comments and questions below, I will respond. Um, you know, it's been a great big project, it's a lot of work, um, I did it all myself essentially, um, but would I do it all again? Absolutely I would, this is just really fantastic. So uh, thanks again people for watching and um, we'll hope to see you guys again soon on some of my other videos.